You took a shovel to the basement. Oh, and you blistered up your hands. And you danced all night at the wedding. You stayed up drinking with the band. And you made love until the daylight. The sweeping across the floor. Oh, tell me what else was it you were looking for? You felt the first year of November steal inside your coat, right there with a fragile pulse of living, fluttered in your throat. You left the house you thought you built in. Never even shut the door Or tell me what else was it You were looking for that came undone the way the little lights do so you spilled over to your friends and bless them your friends came through and then one day you set it down If I learn to say your name, would you learn to stick around? Or we could walk, we could just say nothing, just say nothing more than what else was it you were looking for. Good to be back in this town. Last time I was here, I bought this shirt at the at the place just down the road, the vintage shop down the street. And I stopped in Seth's store today and took a walk out by the, the, the you know whatever whatever that facility is down there before the bike path begins. The aromatic place down there. It was fantastic. It's good to see your town. Good to be back in your state. I played. Uh, Day before yesterday at the National Youth Science Camp, which is located down in Bartow, West Virginia, it's, uh, we got some, we got we got we got the former director right here. Two of the former directors. My God, it's been going since 1963. 1963. Uh, it's really beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. They take the top two high school science seniors from each state in the United States of America. And uh, in, the, in the summer before they go off to college and learn how to, I don't know, do whatever people that good at science learn to do, they, they socialize them. <laughs> Turn them into socialists. <laughs> Teach them they're not the only nerd in the world. Woo! That song was called What Else Was It? This is called Fool's Aaron. My name's Peter Mulvey, for those of you that don't know him. I'm your host.
glad to be here with my friends, Cave Twins. It's not the Cave Twins, is it? It's just Cave Twins. This is important. Cave Twins. Cave Twins. Oh, it's not Cave Twins. It's Cave Twins. You'll love them. sleeping. I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't like sign up for it or anything. I just woke up and there it was. I don't know what that says about this town. Everything. What? Everything. Everything. Every last little thing. Mm. I met three or four great dogs already today. Good dogs in this town. Just uh, uh, brought me an original copy of the 
record that this song is on to sign. It's 20 years old. That's a 20 year old piece of plastic. There's a young man on the back with a whole lot of hair. My name, Mulby, is the Irish word for bald. So it's nice to know at least two things about your future. Trouble with poets is they talk too much. Poets tell us how it hurts them, and it hurts them just a little more. And we cannot tell, maybe they make that stuff up. We've never stood in those shoes, in those skins, in those heads, on those shorts. I think those were metaphors, similes, and I can never remember the goddamn difference. Too soon? Yes. 
Too late? Not too late? Ah, uh, thank you. That, yeah, getting, getting one's Percy Shelley on, as they say. Well, here's a tune from my new record. Much of my new record is, is finger-picked, and uh, that would be a little problematic, because two weeks ago, I closed my thumb in the trunk of my car. And uh, yeah, it was bad. Like, as in, I closed it, and it was just there. And I was like, okay, well, I gotta get the car keys out of my right pocket with my left hand, and you know, like, you ever notice this? You get a hangnail or an eyelash in your eye, and everything stops, and you're screaming, right? But you mangle a part of your body, and you get like super calm. You're like, okay, well, I just need to do this. You know? So, and then I get them out of my pocket, and like, like in a horror movie, I drop them. So now I'm like, go to, you know. And then, I, and then I went into the place I was playing that night and I asked for five Advil and a, and a beer and, uh, and a bag full of ice cubes and put it on there and then my vision started to do that. Anyway, so here's what I've devised. Over the Band-Aid, uh, I put this, this, this thumb pick and I put some masking tape so it doesn't slide around. And we're gonna see how this works now. Uh, Funnily enough, this song is called Who's Gonna Love You Now? <laughs> Wish me luck, people. <laughs> When the dust is down, when you washed off the grease paint, and you're still a clown. Who's gonna love you? Who's gonna love you now? Who's gonna love you? Who's gonna love you now? Another angry old man shouting, get off of my lawn. When your tree has fallen and there was no one to hear it. When your heart is a cornered stray and you can't get near it. Who's gonna love you? Who's gonna love you now? Who's gonna love you? Who's gonna
I return to the uh, I return you now to the uh, the flat pick part of the show. Uh, a friend of mine just pointed out this is sort of like one of those cooking shows where like most of my ingredients are are, are off the table. I can't do anything finger pit, so I, like this entire show I'm just improvising. This is like trying to. It's, I've got peanut butter and tortillas and some rosemary and a chicken and some vinegar. I'm gonna make you something great. It's gonna be fantastic. This is called uh, Lies You Forget You Told.
sweet bearded Jesus. The women in the Copenhagen airport are so good looking. Sweet and bearded Jesus, the women in the Copenhagen airport are so good looking. there's really not a lot to say. Uh, here's a song called Are You Listening? Uh, this is the title track from a record that came out a couple records ago. It was produced by the great Ani DeFranco, who is a... That's how I feel about her. She's fantastic. I made the record, and then if you when you make a record like and she produces it, you're going to be answering the question quite a bit of uh, what is it like to work with Ani DeFranco? And I would just tell the truth. I would say, well, you know, she's about the most intense listener I've ever met. She just, when she listens to you, she's listening from her feet to the top of her head. She's a great listener. And also she's a born leader. And it was a little bit, before I realized that those are actually the same thing. Uh, that's, that's what a born leader is, is someone who's a tremendous listener. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that here on the table in the year 2019. Just back away slowly. <laughs>
stands for Denver International Airport. I, uh, I wrote this tune at a, at a friend's farm. I woke up on his farm alone in an outbuilding next to the sheep pen. And uh, I, know, I know. Well, the only objects in the room in the morning was a coffee maker and a manual typewriter and a banjo. And so I made coffee and I picked up the banjo and I sat down as a typewriter. And we, we songwriter types, I think we have an interest in your thinking that what we do is some mysterious process. And it's not. It's not mysterious at all. It's just a thing. And you do it over and over. It's got one real rule, apply ask the chair. Just, just show up and write and show up and write. And show up and write, you, you, you know, you can call it the muse or you can call it your unconscious. It kind of doesn't matter. All you're doing is showing up and sitting down and getting quiet in the woods, in this case, the woods of your mind, and, and hopefully the songs will come to you. Most days you just get what Tom Waits so eloquently called a mouthful of feathers. But um, uh, songs are elusive creatures. That's the other thing. Like you had better silence your cell phone and get rid of all the distractions. Because if you get an alert while you're working with a good song, any self-respecting song is like, I cannot work under these conditions. They're up, they're out of there. You will never see that song again in your life. This song is nothing like that. I, I, I sat down at the typewriter with the banjo and a cup of coffee, and this song came bounding in like a great, big, friendly, loving, slobbery, labradoodle puppy. And it's just like, hi, hello, hi, hi. Hi, I'm a song about, I'm your song. What is, what are we about? Are we about coffee? I love coffee. Coffee's good. It's like, seriously, this is my song. I, I went into the next room where my friend was making breakfast. The song was like, I love breakfast. Most important meal of the day. I'm a song about breakfast. I had to drive to the airport. The song was in the passenger seat, just hanging its head out the window. I don't know if this is a good song. I just know that this song loves me.
Here's a, here is the song that gave rise to the title of my new record. My new record is called uh, There Is Another World. It was produced by Todd Sikafus, who also produced a band called Mipso, who's going to be here on Friday. Uh, Mipso is coming here to play the Purple Thing. You should check them out. They're fantastic, and they're spectacularly young. In the way that people just are, apparently, all of a sudden. Apparently, they made a whole new crop of human beings after me. I wasn't aware of this, and then a whole new crop of human beings after them. Uh, I, I, no one consulted me. I, I mean, it's fantastic. It's just a little startling. Very young people. But uh, so this tune is called All Saints. And the first verse is just that line uh, there is another world, but it is in this line, which I thought was a quote from William Butler Yeats. And then the last verse is stolen from the poet Naomi Shihab Nye. And uh, I, she and I are pen pals. And so once I'd written the song, I, I sent it to her because I thought that she'd be awfully flattered to have Yeats and her work in the same song. And she wrote back immediately. And she said, that is so lovely. And I love that Paul Eloard quote. And so I went and I looked it up. And um, yeah, Yeats didn't say, there is another world, but it is in this one. Paul Ellard said that. So uh, if you happen to get the record and then you're reading the liner notes and you see where it like, attributes that quote to Yates, <laughs> that's wrong. In my defense, it's really hard to look things up these days. <laughs> the middle verse fell at all. Here, and then I'm going to turn you over into the capable hand of ca uh, hands of uh, Cave Twins. Cave Twins. They've driven all the way from Ohio. Thank you. 
was just a stranger, she was just a stranger, she came into town, looking for a manger, she was a stranger, she wasn't looking for you. with me and they're over there. Also the Cave Twins have this new technology called vinyl, which is a, a, what it sounds like. It's a piece of vinyl, but then it has a groove in it and you put a thing called a stylus on it and music comes out of a speaker. It's amazing. Wow. Cave Twins have pioneered this. They invented it and now they're selling their music on it. It's the craze that is sweeping the nation. Um, Please buy our records, and you don't even have to listen to them. You can just keep listening to us on Spotify and, and Tidal and all that stuff. Just buy the records. And then, like, uh, put them on your coffee table and put cups of coffee on them. Right, so I promised you this was happy. Um, it's sort of got the feel of a sea shanty, so if you want to just grab a mug of your beer or herbal tea or whatever you have and just sort of do that, you know. You might, you, you might feel that urge stealing over you. I wrote this song here in West Virginia. Um, I was at Chuck Yeager International Airport and I was clocked in, which is often the case there. And um, my friend Jeff Focal, uh, he called me and he said, oh, thank you both. And he said, uh, you know, we were just shooting the breeze because I had time. And I said, what are you reading? And he said, oh, I'm reading um, Ragtime by E.L. Doctorow, which is an historical novel, and Houdini's in that novel. And so I said, is Houdini still in that book? <laughs> I was very, very proud of myself because that would be funny. And then when I got home from that tour, 
I went to the public library in Milwaukee, the city that I lived in at that time, and I, um, I checked out uh, Ragtime by E.L. Dr. Rowe, and I took a razor blade, and I cut all the pages that had Houdini in them, and then I like typed up pages that had like nominally similar plot points and tried to imitate his prose and put the page numbers at the bottom and put those in and just sort of glued them all in. So I made a copy of, of Ragtime that has no Houdini in it, and <laughs> it took me a month, but I got it back to the library. I don't know what it is. See, the, it's the honor system. I don't know what then happened, but I really hope that someone checked it out and reread it. That's possible. <laughs> I'm a public servant. <laughs> Thank you.